Hey there, welcome to Issue 34, and I'm here with Molly. Molly, uh, can you introduce yourself and tell me where you're from? Yeah, my name is Molly Yonker. Um, I'm a current master's student at West Virginia University. And what do you do, Molly? Um, so right now I'm doing research, um, focusing on the secondary transfer of trace DNA, specifically that from nitrile gloves at crime scenes. Interesting. So tell me about trace DNA. What is trace DNA that we're talking about? Yeah, so the trace DNA that we're dealing with right now, in my research we refer to as Trace DNA, it is coming from touch surfaces. However, we're not necessarily calling it touch DNA um, because trace DNA can come from sources that have not been physically touched. Um, so that's why we like to refer to it as trace DNA, but it is low levels or low quality DNA as well. What, where else would it be coming from besides touch? So it can come from touch, it can come from other um, bodily fluids as well, but if it's coming from other bodily fluids, it has most likely been transferred first. So it's not gonna be like a direct stain um, or deposit, anything like that. But if there was like a stain that had been transferred onto something else, that could potentially be trace amounts or low levels of DNA as well. Okay, and when you say low levels of DNA, how much are we talking about here? Um, there's no binary threshold um, as of now, but in the picogram, so anywhere from like 100 picograms, sometimes even less than that as well. Wow, that's, that is not very much yes. DNA. <laughs> yeah, very wow. low level. How do you even go about collecting that little DNA? Yeah, so what we're using right now to collect is we're doing swabbing. Um, so we're doing swabbing methods, double swabbing, um, front and back, and we're using Triton as a detergent as well. Okay. So you say you're, you're studying the transfer via gloves. Mm -hmm. How big of a problem is that? Um, so it's been a recent um, problem that's been talked about for sure. Um, what kind of really inspired us is there are, of course, recommendations to change your gloves all the time as a crime scene um, investigator. However, it can potentially still happen. One big case that I've been using to reference a lot that they think it potentially happened in was the Amanda Knox case. Um, so potentially DNA was transferred onto the bra clasp that they use as evidence via the gloves that their investigators and police officers were wearing. Um, so that kind of sparked my interest in this and another reason why I was particularly interested in it. Um, so for my research, we kind of have seen simulation setup that we run where the investigator is wearing gloves. Um, we have an innocent individual who touches a surface. So one of the surfaces we use is a door handle. Um, that innocent person is gonna touch the door handle then we have a mock burglary scene. So we have a uh, perpetrator who comes in. That perpetrator will go into the room. They drop a evidence item. Right now, the evidence item that we are using is a screwdriver. So they'll come in, drop the screwdriver. Then I become the investigator. So I will put on the entire Tyvek suit, all the investigation stuff, mask, wear my gloves. I enter the room. However, when I enter the room, I touch the same surface that that innocent individual touched. So I will touch the door handle that was previously touched by the innocent individual. Then I go and I bag that evidence item, but I don't change my gloves in between. So I'm potentially transferring DNA from the innocent person that was on that door handle onto the item of evidence. So when that's done and it's all packaged, I will swab um, the evidence item. I swab the glove that I was wearing as well. And I swab the door handle too. And we are generating profiles from that and doing a wheel counts to see how many unique alleles we can attribute to the innocent person who had no known contact with that evidence item. Wow, I love that <laughs> simulation. And, you know, I was browsing the posters earlier and I mm -hmm. saw um, I saw that you're presenting a poster on this and had an amazing diagram of your <laughs> simulation and everything Thank that you. I love. Um, so what are what conclusions are you reaching in this research and what are you presenting in the poster? Yeah, so we're reaching um, some conclusions that we do have transfer of alleles that are showing up on that evidentiary item um, when we know that they obviously have not touched it, like I said. We also did run our samples that had the evidence item through Euroformix, which is a type of probabilistic genotyping, um, to generate some likelihood ratios for us to see the likelihood that that innocent individual could be attributed attributed to the evidence profile that's on the screwdriver. Um, now our likelihood ratio numbers that we're getting on this are of course very, very low. Um, only like most of them are above one, but they're not much higher than one, um, which of course is not a common number. We're seeing normally numbers like in thousands for likelihood ratios. However, it's pretty significant with ours because our touch samples are only touched by the innocent individual for 10 seconds. So if you're touching a surface for 10 seconds and you can still have a likelihood ratio greater than one generate to say that you could be the um, evidence profile that's on that is pretty important as well. Wow. So based on your, your research and your conclusions, 
you know, are you providing recommendations for um, for procedures or is that something that you're not extending to yet? Um, so we haven't extended into that yet. We've had some topics on if we want to further go into um, providing recommendations to different examiners and investigators. Um, we're still in the collection phase, so this is um, kind of the first portion of the collection phase that we've done. Um, we still have many more simulations to go through in total to get our numbers up higher. Um, I think after we take a big look at that data, we're going to then kind of decide if we want to go about making recommendations or anything like that. Awesome. Uh, you know, as you as you look ahead, where do you hope this work or this research takes you in the next few years? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a good question. So I am graduating with my master's degree in May. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, thank you. So I'm looking for jobs for that. Um, seeing where that goes. But with the research, I would love for it to be maybe picked up even further if that's um, a project that interests someone else or anything. However, I really was interested in it because I like that it brings it back to the actual like crime scene involvement in it. Um, portion of that research, because my end goal is I like to do actual casework and perform on that. So that's kind of where I see it. Nice. So I have to ask, I know everyone hates this question. You can tell me, you can tell me no, but, uh, but what do you what what are your next steps after graduation or what do you hope to be doing after graduation um i would love to work in a lab somewhere um that's my goals right now i haven't fully started looking at the job search yet i've made a lot of connections here which has been really helpful this is my first conference that i've been to um so i'm really enjoying it i'm making some connections and looking to start the job hunt pretty soon awesome so that was going to be my next question you said this is your your first time at ishi mm -hmm. what what brought you to ishi why were you excited to come to this conference I was excited to not only see like the other posters that people are presenting. So I've seen posters before. There are girls in my research group that have put amazing posters before and they came to issue last year. So I got to watch kind of the aftermath of that. And they were all so excited and they brought back so many new ideas and innovations and exciting things to talk about. And so I really like to do that as well as see all the new technology. Um, there's so much new technology that's out there that our lab doesn't necessarily have the funding or access to right now. So it's cool to be able to come here and talk to others who are using it and watch the demos and everything like that as well. What's your favorite thing you've learned so far since you've been here? Um, or at least heard about, I guess. Anything that I've learned or heard about? I don't know, I'm pretty excited about all the new rapid DNA stuff that's coming out. Yeah, there's been a lot of talks on that and there's also a lot of talks today on gene genealogy, which is pretty interesting to me too. Cool. If you had to give some advice to someone who's coming to their first issue, and particularly a student who's coming for the first time, what would your advice be? Um, the first one is wear comfortable shoes. Um, it's a lot of walking. Um, but also just don't be afraid to go up and like ask people questions or talk to anyone. Everyone is so willing to talk to people. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Have you uh, had any time to hang out in Denver while we've been here? Um, a little bit. So we came in early on Sunday um, and we got to explore a little bit before we went over to where we're staying. And it's pretty nice. I like it. Cool. Yeah, it's a great city. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun so far. Anyway, thank you so much for yeah, your time. Thanks, thanks for, for chatting me. with me. It was great to learn about your research and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.